Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part two of our dive into the TechDraw workbench in FreeCAD. In part one, we set up pages and added views of our parts to the pages. And in this part, we're going to look at, uh, at creating dimensions for the parts and adding uh, other kinds of decorations like hatches and symbols. Now, I don't have a lot to say in this video. It's going to go pretty quick. Um, and it isn't meant to be a replacement for the documentation. In fact, if you come across something that I said wrong or a better way of doing what I'm trying to achieve here, by all means, please leave a comment down below. But better yet, get yourself an account to help edit on the wiki and uh, uh, make some suggestions there. That helps everybody and uh, improves the project overall. All right, let's jump on into it. I made a couple modifications to my part since the first video. I added this uh, recess here and, uh, and I changed the dimensions a little bit, uh, scaled the whole thing, uh, and you'll see why a little bit later. Um, the, the first thing that we might want to do with a, a tech draw page is to add dimensions. That's probably the most natural thing. Uh, and it's quite simple. It's all controlled off of this toolbar here. And uh, there's a number of different kinds of dimension types, and they're very similar to the kinds of constraints that we have in the Sketcher workbench. Now, if I select an uh, entity in my drawing, like a, like a line, and use, say, the horizontal constraint, it'll put the constraint in, and I can drag it and reposition both the marker and the line extensions uh, anywhere that I like on the drawing. Um, and the same thing applies for vertical constraints and linear constraints as well. Now one thing that's different about the TechDraw workbench from the Sketcher, uh, and, and honestly I think this is a good place for an improvement, uh, in the Sketcher you can click on one of the tools to activate it and then click on the elements of the geometry that you want to apply that to. If I try the same thing here, I'll get an error, or at least a warning, telling me that, there, that I need to select an object first. So in that case, the only thing you can do is apply dimensions one at a time by selecting and then applying. And if you have to apply a similar uh, dimension in a lot of places, it just ends up being a lot of trips back and forth to the toolbar. It's a minor thing, but it, it uh, could definitely be improved and would make TechDraw more consistent with the other workbenches in FreeCAD. Now besides selecting an individual entity, I can select several entities, for instance two parallel lines and do a uh, uh, vertical distance constraint. And here you'll see that the extensions are coming off the endpoints of these lines rather than the uh, endpoint here when I've got a, uh, a fillet on, uh, on that corner. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is to select the individual vertexes and control select. Uh, you have to hold the control key down to select multiple and apply a similar kind of dimension that way. And it works just the same. For circular dimensions, you have a couple of different options as well. You can apply a dimension that's either a radius or a diameter to a circle, for instance. There's two different tools here for doing that. Uh, I'll select this main circle and apply a diameter. And uh, you'll see that the, the callout uh, lines give me a couple of different options for, uh, in fact, I can even put it inside and it'll give me the side to side uh, indicator. Uh, and if I switch over to these, uh, the tool properties, looking at that dimension, you can switch them from one type to another, uh, changing a diameter into a radius, for instance. And uh, it appears to be a small bug where the, the arrowhead ends up in the wrong spot, but it is switching from a, a, di a diameter uh, dimension to a radius dimension and back if I wish. I've left this uh, uh, dimension on this top line here, and I'm going to go over to this uh, uh, isometric view of the part and apply the same dimension over here, uh, or similar, be a linear dimension or a um, line length. But I'm going to get a different result. Uh, in this case, it's reporting at 70.219, whereas the line's actually 86 millimeters long. And the difference is that Remember that th th these views are 2D projections of our part. And so this is reporting literally the length of this line as it's drawn on the page. And because it's at an angle and it represents perspective, it's, it's not going to be a true measurement of the part dimension. It's a measure of the line that's here. 
But if I wanted to dimension uh, an isometric view like this, I can do that. What you do is switch over to your actual view and select the same line. And then click on this, it uh, looks like a, a chain link here. And it will give you a, what you're doing is linking one of the dimensions in the drawing to uh, a, a piece of geometry in the part itself. And so I'm going to link to that second uh, dimension line that we created and move it over into the selected line. And I'll say OK, and I'll switch back to my part. And it won't update automatically, but as soon as I refresh the page, you'll see that now the dimension reports 86 millimeters, the same as this one here. You have a couple of different tool choices for applying angle dimensions. Um, I can select two edges like this and apply a, uh, an angle uh, dimension this way. Um, I can also select three points to do it. And the same thing is true for linking dimensions. If I select the two edges here and apply the angle, it's going to report at like 60 degrees. But I can go back over, select the same two edges again, give it the uh, uh, create the link, and I'm going to link this to my second angle dimension here and apply and refresh and you'll see now that it reports 90 degrees. It's always a good idea when you're putting dimensions on your drawings to include the tolerance for those dimensions and TechDraw has properties for that. There's no tool in the toolbar but I've selected this uh, diameter uh, dimension here and looking in the, the properties you have an over tolerance and an under tolerance and if they're anything other than zero like 0 0.05 Um, if either one of them is anything other than zero, it'll add the, uh, uh, the tolerance indicators at the end of the string. Now the string that's displayed comes from these two format properties. Uh, the first is a uh, uh, format string where it's showing the diameter symbol and uh, the number of digits after the decimal place to, to show. And then there's a Boolean property for arbitrary. and uh, what this does is if this is true, then this string just becomes a literal string. It, it isn't interpreted at all. So if you get into a case where you, you, you just want to put a dimension on and you want to have absolute control over what's in there, you can do that um, and, and it, it'll, it will take that directly, um, a, a, exactly as it's typed in there, and, and you'll see that now the string is actually showing the format string. So I could put anything in the format spec and turn that to true, and that's what will show up there. Besides dimensions, the thing you might want to do to decorate a view is to add a hatch to uh, a face. Now a hatch just fills in any enclosed region, so it has to, has to be a fully bounded uh, region. For instance, a face like this, um, or even a face like this. And uh, you have two different tools for applying a hatch. Uh, the gray one is a simpler, uh, it's just a, has a small number of properties and it applies a simple hatch to the face, um, or to the region I should say. The other is a little bit more, uh, gives you more options, but works in much the same way. It'll open up a dialog, and from here you can select a pattern file. And these .pat files are uh, Autodesk pat, uh, um, patterns, and uh, so fully compatible and can be imported here. It can't be imported here. You have to put them in the correct directory in FreeCAD. One last thing you can do to decorate drawings is insert arbitrary symbols, either SVG files or bitmaps. Uh, FreeCAD gives you a tool for each of those here on the toolbar. For instance, if I wanted to insert something like a signature, I could click on this and just pick an SVG file that I've already prepared. And once it's inserted, it can be treated like any other uh, view on the page. You've got uh, controls to, con to set the uh, the scaling and the the position, or you can just simply drag it around on the screen, and uh, and it'll update it whenever you refresh. So what's this good for? Well, besides producing dimensioned drawings, which is its obvious first purpose, you could also use it to create something like uh, like an assembly drawing.
And so I'm going to delete these two views from my page. And uh, we'll switch back over. And I've added something that looks kind of like a, like a NEMA 17 stepper motor. Uh, it's got an alignment boss, uh, the body, and a shaft, and would, would kind of fit into this recess that I created here. Get the view roughly the way that you want it to appear, then select all of the objects that you want in the, to be included in the view, and create a new view of it in your page. Now, if the view doesn't come out exactly the way that you want it, you can fine-tune the direction properties by hand. And refresh to see the difference. And this is the case when you're talking about something like a assembly instruction where a perspective view might be uh, more useful. So I can turn on the perspective view uh, property, set that to true, and I'll get this sort of wildly distorted view. And you can control this distortion with the focus property here. This focus property only applies if we're in perspective view. And uh, the if you get too small on this, you'll get some really kind of crazy, uh, I'll just set this, you'll get that kind of noise like that. But if I set it back to 100, okay, we're at that. That's the, the default value. And if I bump it up to 1,000, um, now we're, we're starting to see, you know, it, it's starting to look a little bit more uh, appropriate as a, uh, as a perspective view for an assembly. Now the last thing I might want to do is insert something like, a, um, like an arrow to indicate... Uh, you know how it, how it would be positioned and my arrow is clearly too large so we'll set the scale down to 0.1 and refresh it and now I could you know place the arrow to indicate uh, how it's how the motors being inserted into the position using this this button here you can turn off the uh, uh, the frames like that and uh, it, it which will also toggle off the uh, uh, the vertex indicators. If you double click into, um, you know, not on one of the lines, but inside the, the bound box of the view, it'll turn those back on and you just toggle them off again like that. When the view frames are turned off, you won't be able to reposition the object, so you just need to turn it on to do that. All right, that's about all I got to say about dimensions, hatches, and symbols. In the next video, we're going to dive into multi-view drawings and uh, talk a little bit about how those work. I uh, hope you come along for the ride. Thanks for watching.